Oh my gosh, it's so windy. Stay good, Gimbal. Hey, what's up guys? I've been driving all day and I came out to Dinosaur National Monument. Much to my dismay, half of the park is actually closed and it's super windy up here. So I went and found a BLM uh, road that's like kind of on an offshoot of the, the road that leads up to the monument. And tomorrow I'm gonna do the best I can to see what I can explore. I guess there's a section of the park that's uh, in Utah that's still open. The part that I was gonna go to in Colorado is closed though. It's Echo, I think it's called Echo Campground or Echo Road. And that wind is so strong, it's blowing the gimbal everywhere. So anyways, yeah, we found this pretty dope little dirt road, Shy and I. What you doing, buddy? What you doing, Shiloh? The only downside is it's just bitch and windy. So um, I'm gonna go a little bit further down the road and see if I can find anything better. Uh, but they can't really beat these views, man. It'd be amazing to wake up here. So it took about seven hours to get here from Denver. Definitely a longer journey than I anticipated. I've got to hide out here behind the Jeep. <laughs> ah, the, the wind keeps blowing the gimbal over. Anyways, I'm going to go cruise down this road and see what other campsites we can find. But if, if we're not able to find anything else, this uh, will definitely do. One question I've got, I just picked up my pistol, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's fine to shoot out here in the BLM land, but it's very close to the boundaries of the National Monument. So I may just keep it put away, um, even though there's seriously not a soul out here, but last thing I wanna do is uh, <laughs> get in trouble immediately after purchasing that gun, so. Looks like we're in for a rough one. Storm blew right over top of us. I had to move from two different campsites because the wind was so bad it was like kicking up this red dust and Shiloh didn't even want to be outside. He was running back in the car. This this uh, site's not too bad though. It's nestled. So I gave up the good views in a, uh, with a trade for less wind. But uh, we got this nice little rock. So that's a pretty sweet view. Somebody built a fire pit a while back. Ooh, a nice rusty great so we're gonna set up shop here you holding the fort down man you gonna hold the fort down shy row so the storm died down and it's looking pretty good so I went ahead and started a fire and there's all kinds of dead firewood around here which is great and uh, there's plenty of moisture so don't really feel like it's uh, a concern I, I imagine that would change as closer we get to summer, the forest up here definitely kind of reminds me of parts of the south, as well as parts of Red Feather Lakes. Just uh, a ton of old forest and dead stuff. Um, but actually, no, I take it back. Uh, I was thinking San Juans, but it actually resembles Buena Vista, um, like Four Mile Canyon area, quite a bit. Same kind of brushy trees, and I don't know what you call these, but very similar trails. It's definitely not a great place to get stuck in a rainstorm because this stuff turns to mud so fast. Just going through these trails, there was a couple of pockets of water and it was, it was fun, you know, it was probably two feet deep, <clears throat> but I went around the edge and uh, it just, as soon as it gets wet, it just turns to sopping mud, so. So I think that about wraps it up for tonight. I'm gonna make some food, hit the sack kind of early and get out and explore uh, most of the day tomorrow. So we've got a full day ahead of us and one more night camping. I don't know if we'll stay here again. We could, this is a great campsite. It's about seven hours back to Denver. And so I'm playing with the idea of pit stopping, like going and playing in the park tomorrow, um, which I'll have to go over to Utah. It's about 30 minutes west, but then I could double back and by midday to late day, maybe hit a piece of White River um, so get a little bit of different landscape on the way back, maybe a little bit colder, snowy camp, or we might stay here. So we're just going to play it by ear tomorrow, but I'll see you guys in the morning. It's a beautiful morning. It sure would have been amazing to wake up on that ridge, but it stormed and rained so much last night. So I'm really glad that we came down into these trees. It was a little bit less violent. But I woke up and was looking on the ground. Look at this. If anyone knows what this is, um, post in the comments. It looks like they were trying to make uh, a symbol, but then there's these bones right here, and there are all these sticks are lashed together. Interesting ceremonial.
piece. But uh, we're getting ready to head up. I think we might have missed the, the real glorious sunrise. But we're going to head, I believe, 30 minutes west into Utah and go check out the dinosaur bones. I figure there's not much sense driving seven hours all the way out here and not going another 30 minutes to check them out. So that's the plan. Wow, doesn't get any better than that, right? I knew it would be really, really beautiful up on that ridge. So the first, the first road that we drove up was up there on that ridge. And it was just so windy last night and it was blowing in storms. So it was nice to be down in these trees. But I had a feeling we were gonna miss these super epic sunrise. So maybe tonight I'm torn on whether we should head back to the forest closer to, Dem to Denver blech, or spend another night up here. It's pretty pretty beautiful up here. I didn't realize we were so close to Utah. It was like literally three minutes from Dinosaur. <clears throat> That's a cool sign. Yeah so this whole this whole area, I was talking to the guy at the gas station, he said there's about 300 people that live in Dinosaur. And then the closest town is Rangeley, which he said was about four times that size. So there's maybe 1,500 people in like a, just a huge northwest corner of Colorado. And he said there's not much going on out here except oil fields and uh, natural gas drilling. That's how people make their money. But it is just gorgeous today. You hear the geese in the distance? What a beautiful river. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Man, I was feeling all hesitant about traveling this far. I didn't anticipate going seven hours or heading to Utah. And my check engine light even just came on. And I was just like, whatever. The, just what an amazing blessing it is to, to find these places. I mean, since the park's not open yet, it's probably another month until the other half, uh, until the roads are open, there's just nobody out here. So it's just me and Shy. It's absolutely beautiful. And spring is such a gorgeous time to come check out the mountains. All the colors are starting to come out. After a long, gray, cold winter, man, you have no idea how great it is to see green. And soon we'll see the flowers too. Wow, keeps getting better. Barely even gotten into the park. This reminds me a little bit of Zion and definitely parts of Moab. What an incredible valley. There's a huge river on the other side and then these kind of shrubby grasslands. Man, the rocks are epic in the morning. It's my favorite time to come out to the canyons of any kind. Uh, if we keep going like south southwest down to the Arches National Park and the canyon lands, it's just, man, morning and, and dusk. It's like nothing you've ever seen. It makes you, it reminds me of like Bible stories because in my head, you know, I'm picturing like that Mesopotamian, I don't know, landscape or whatever in these little bushes. They always remind me of I don't know what I'm trying to say. Well, the geography out here is just so very cool. I'm curious where the geese are. I can hear these geese honking. They must be down on the other side of those rocks. I think there's a, a river. The one that's wrapping around the valley on the other side, this way. So this road that we we're on ended pretty quickly. It's pretty short, but there's a cabin at the end that the the nice lady at the visitor center told me to check out. It's called Josie Morris Cabin. I don't know much about it, 
but she said it was worth checking out, so we're gonna go that way. Wow, can you imagine having a cabin down here? Incredible. Some very cool places to camp nearby because the park is so close to all this BLM land. There's just a lot of dirt roads and places you can hang out on the outskirts. A pit stopped inside this valley on the way to the cabin and some of these rocks are so epic. And I love these trees. This reminds me of Steamboat. So along the Yampa River, um, these kind of, I don't know what the names of the trees are, but the colors are just such a stark contrast to the geography. That's what I love. In the spring, they're neon and green, and in the fall, obviously, reds and yellows. But it makes these valleys so, so beautiful. All right, so here we are. This is Josie's cabin. Let's check it out. Hey, Shy, come here, bud. Oh, wow. So cool. Let me find Shiloh, put his bell on. Shiloh, come here, buddy. Let me, let me bell ya, friend. There we go. All right, let's check it out. Wow. Just dirt, dirt floors. Makes me have a lot of respect for that uh, YouTube channel, My Self Reliance. He built his own cabin over two years. And it's been a long time since I was in a, like an old school log cabin like this, but just seeing the size of the logs and imagining the kind of time and grit it would take to build this by hand is pretty cool. It's also uh, interesting, you know, you fantasize about living in a log cabin but it's really cold, you know? Zero insulation. <laughs> Shy's bell is gonna <laughs> make the video. <laughs> Sorry, he's just a fast hound. If I don't put a bell on him, there's no telling where he's gonna go. Wouldn't this be so cool if this was your backyard, you know, looking at these rocks, having the monument right behind you? Let's see what this has to say. A real pioneer. Old homesteads are scattered throughout Dinosaur National Monument, each a hope, oh, each a memorial to hope and hard work. This cabin and the nearby structures are part of the homestead established by Josie, ba Josie Bassett Morris in the early 1900s. So I guess this, this uh, cabin's more like 120 years old. Well, Shy? Should we make some breakfast, buddy? So we hung out here at Josie's cabin and there's some picnic tables and we're gonna make some breakfast. This is a nice little setup I've got going lately. It, you know, I can like cook pretty gourmet meals, not that sausages are gourmet, but I'm saying with the, the Coleman stove and the cast iron, you just have a lot of options for cooking. So I'll cook out the back of my Jeep sometimes or find a picnic table like this and you can put on quite the production. Hey, Shy, come here, bud. Come here, you gotta stay close. So he's not allowed in the National Monument and I kind of didn't really think about that. I forget national parks, dogs aren't generally allowed. There's markers on all the trails that say no dogs on the trails. So I'm just having to keep him close by. And since most of the park isn't open and you know, we didn't realize that, and Shy can't go on the trails. I figured this time we're just gonna do some scouting, seeing the lay of the land. And then when we come back next time, I think I wanna head into the Echo Canyon or Echo Trail, which goes into these canyons. You can take the Jeep and we'll probably have to make that a uh, dog-free time. So what is on the menu you ask? Well, I'm so grateful you did. Immunity shot, this is basically some hardcore vitamin C turmeric echinacea. I like to take stuff like this with me when I'm out in the woods or when I'm not eating as perfectly as I could because it helps keep you healthy. Got some chicken sausages, 
and then we brought some eggs as well so we're gonna do chicken sausages and eggs I usually have some greens to like skillet up alongside it and balance it out but I used all the kale last night uh, making curried turkey so we're down to the sausages and the eggs and I'm gonna cook those up and then save half of them for tomorrow morning right on bon appetit so my prior vegan self would roll over in his grave just got the chicken sausages and eggs this morning but man i am so grateful and it looks amazing i mean this is just it's my dream coming out and camping places like this being able to enjoy a meal with your dog friends loved ones whoever um it's just the most special thing in the world and it's such a relaxing feeling to be out in nature uh, and have the comforts of some of the modern modern uh, amenities so very cool now this is one of those places you can see the wildlife sign they've got black bears and lions and whatnot and in heavily touristed areas you got to really clean up after yourself because over time what will happen is the animals get acclimated to where the food is and they start changing their behavior so if you're seeing this video and you see that sign um, know that one of the reasons I bring uh, the seventh generation that's an all-natural um, basically disinfectant and I just make sure to clean everything up when I'm cooking out in a place like this. You definitely don't want to leave food dropping down on the ground or um, just be careless with your trash because all that kind of stuff attracts critters and it can also change the microbiology of the ground so you just want to be cognizant of that when you're in especially national parks but really everywhere. <laughs> Shiloh is so happy. He's so happy to be outside and running around. I cannot wait until we get our own property with yard and big fence and just somewhere he can do his thing 100% of the time. Look at this place, man. And that's precisely why I bought a Jeep. Only thing that's gonna get you in some of these places, well, I guess a good forerunner or a truck, but the ultimate's the Rubicon. You know this. So as I was leaving the cabin, there was a little dirt road turn off and it said uh, Blue Mountain. So I ran up here and I'm in another one of those situations where I just can't go more than 20 feet without stopping. Check it out, man. This is a better vantage point of those big white rocks we saw on the way in. Then down here, we've got some water. You can hear it in the distance. I'll have to flip the microphone around though. Oh, it's so peaceful in those big canyons. And then check this rock out. Huh, what? It's just, this is really outstanding territory. I can't believe I've never come up here. I guess it's because it's seven hours away. It's just like Moab from Denver. It's uh. It's a commitment for sure. But I can't get over the landscape. Maybe it's because we had such a great year with snow and so these desert areas, I mean, I know desert blooms are beautiful, but I mean, the green valley floor with the deserty red rocks and the hot sun, but the water, oh, it's just all amazing. I bet you this is what Zion looks like when they get a ton of water because they get those flash floods and that's a really beautiful place with canyons and desert as well. This is crazy, dude. It says this is fully intact. Wow. I 
Okay, okay, what? Look at this thing. You can see its tail, but over here's the head. Holy crap. That's nuts. I guess you're not supposed to touch them. <laughs> I want to touch. Looks like they've got this thing built right into the rock wall. That's cool. What? That is insane. Look at them all. That is nutty. It looks like it looks like just a bunch of them got buried all at once. What? So this is the actual rock, like, where the geologists were digging and they built this museum right on top of it. Probably just to make sure and keep the bones intact. Wow, look at these. What? So, you know, I heard a couple years ago that they found dinosaur bones out in Aspen and then they had to quit the geological digging, I believe, because Snowmass or one of the uh, ski mountains owned the land or had a contract coming up on it and so they halted all the excavation but they were finding some tremendous stuff out around Aspen this is blowing my mind look at all these bones wow so I wonder, by the looks of these rocks, the big monument rocks, it kind of looks volcanic, you know, like if you go out to the Tetons and Yellowstone, and you, you kind of wonder, like, if you just look at the way these rocks are, I'm assuming it's some kind of molten, molten impact of the past. See this out here? Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so like these rocks, all look super volcanic in nature. But there's no volcano out here. So I wonder if it was like a meteor. I should do my homework, huh? Instead of just sitting here musing, I should look it up. But it, it really looks like some kind of, you know, catastrophic impact of the past. Well, I gotta say, this is one of the craziest things I've ever found. I mean, it's really cool to see the, the fossils just built or not built, but discovered right in the rock wall. And then they built this building around it. So who knows how much more is out there, you know? Incredible. That was super rad. That was probably one of the coolest out in the middle of nowhere things I've ever found. And there was a map of all the uh, light pollution of the United States and apparently dinosaur sits in this little dark spot. So that's an interesting idea for a summer of travel. I wanna go find all the dark spots and stargaze um, without the light pollution. But anyways, um, we're about to leave. I gotta go check on Shiloh. He's not allowed anywhere in here, so he's just hanging in the car and it's starting to get warm. But you know, dinosaurs is one of those things that I feel like a lot of people uh, don't necessarily even believe in, or maybe they think it's part of science that we made up to explain our history or where we came from. But man, I would encourage people to come out here and check this place out because those those bones into the side of the quarry are pretty cool, pretty convincing. Um, I've got one friend in Denver I know will be freaking out about it. So anyways, about to peace out of here. Thanks y'all, we'll see you next time.